Like the mind is the most powerful thing in the world. In the it world. Is. It is so amazing that I used to be a 300 pound guy and I thought that was it. Could barely read, could do anything. And now that what was inside that person was this guy that's in front of you today. That's how scary the mind is. And that's what I started realizing through this journey is that once I got a taste of, wow, man, I haven't even cracked. I haven't even begun to crack what the mind is capable of. And what I started realizing is on the other end of suffering, that's the real growth of life because you realize how the mind processes shit. And I talk about another thing called theory and practice. A lot of people are theorists. They, these smart guys that read these fucking books and shit, man, and they sit down, they tell you what the mind is supposed to do. And a lot of us listen to that shit. It becomes like, this is it, man. This, this old man who has been studying the mind forever, this is the cap that we have. By being a practitioner, I went out and realized a lot of these guys are so wrong, man. The mind has capabilities that are so unknown. And I found that through suffering. And there's a whole nother world on the other end of that. And I feel like there's the physical governor that your body kicks in and says, I can't do this. And then there's right. the mental governor. Right. And a lot of us allow the mental governor to kick in right. far earlier than necessary. Right. And I've always found that at the moment that that kicks in and you push the other side of it, mm -hmm. you actually get this surge of physical energy. That's right. Of feeling that capable of anything, that right. superhuman power. But most of us try to avoid even getting close to the governor. Right. I call that my 40% rule, where like a car has a governor on it. It can go 130. You know, the governor's only going to go 91. Right. And the whole thing about that is a true statement, you know, like, like what you said, our mind wants to protect us. The mind is like, honestly, it has a tactical advantage over us. It knows our deepest, darkest fears or insecurities. It knows where we start to feel, uh, we start getting that doubt creeping. It says, hey man, you know what, man? Maybe this isn't good. Let's go back home to the wife. Let's go back home to the kids. This is not comfortable. So in that moment, the mind directs us. It's a protective mechanism. It saves us for doing bodily harm or, or it really saves us from discovering that the mind's like, I want to be in charge of you. I don't want you to be in charge of me. So it tells you, let's just stop right here. But once you start breaking through that barrier and start breaking down that governor, that governor that you've put in your mind, because we forget we are in control of our mind. We believe it's the other way around. No, we put in our minds what we should do. But we believe our mind is telling us, it's, it's giving us all this feedback. We have to reprogram it and tell us, no, 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 we're good. We're good. We got it's, This sucks. But it's okay. And I think one of the remarkable things about the transformation in the beginning was, you know, here after completing over 60 ultra marathons, you, it seems like you're genetically gifted. Miles are no problem. But at the start, getting just over a mile was a struggle. Yeah. And quit was at the forefront of your mind the entire time. Mm -hmm. So for our listeners who are like, man, I can't run that. I can't do this physical stuff. Like that's great mental toughness, but I, I'm not even meant for the, the physical side of things. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit to us about that mile marker one, mile marker two, to now looking for unlimited miles. Right. Well, the first big thing is, once again, it goes back to open-mindedness. If you walk into any kind of event, whether it be physical or mental, if you walk in with already putting that block on your mind, if man, this ain't going to happen. People go, how did you run 135 miles to death value? And how did you run 100 miles with no training? Because I went into it not thinking, I can't do this, man. I went into it with a strategy. I had an open-mindedness. So until your mind is open to the possibilities that I can do this, you would never be able to do it. Once the mind starts to believe it can be achieved, it then, only then, does it start to break down tactically how we can do this. Until then, you're going to always lose. 